Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I'm going to have a look at a liquid damaged MacBook Pro today. Um, this bit of paper is just covering up some customer details, so it's not significant to the repair at all. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off and see what we've got here. Um, this has been sitting for uh, a, a while since the accident happened, so um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to find on the inside. So we'll find out. Uh huh. Okay, right. So, well, looking at the inside of the back panel, you can see visible staining in the uh, in the dust marks, uh, which show how the laptop was flooded at one point. So that tells us something. And in addition to that, if we have a look at this area down here, you can again see visible staining. Let's just give you a bit of a close up. Excuse the focus. Um, you can see marks around this area where again there's been standing liquid. So uh, um, what we're going to do, we're just going to basically brush all of that, clean it all up and uh, see what comes back to life. With a bit of luck, there's no permanent damage, but I think for safety's sake, we're going to have to drop out the logic board so we can have a look at both sides of that to make sure it's as clean as it can be. And hopefully it should come back to life. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to take out the, uh, the battery, the hard drive and the logic board and uh, we'll go from there. Um, these connectors here, there's a fair bit of variation on this design, however sometimes you get these little blocks of plastic that just hold the connectors in. They're just stuck down with like double sided tape or something, so just pull those off like that. Okay, this bit down here, this is the microphone and it's uh, attached to the back of the logic board and stuck to the aluminium. So we just need to unstick it so that when we pull the logic board out it will come out at the same time. So this is just a case of jamming a screwdriver in there essentially and just breaking that free. Yeah. Like that, there we go. Right, and now we just need to pull out all the screws holding the logic board in. Right, now with all the screws out, this should just lift up like that. There we go. Right, so that is all clear. It's dusty, but that's just that will just all brush off. So we'll get to that when we reassemble. Um, as we reassemble, we'll do a visual inspection on all these connectors, make sure there's no corrosion on those. However, this is the part that we're interested in. Okay, so now we're cleaning up. So um, as aforementioned, now we're a little bit closer. You can see this general grime and grot around this area here. And let's just turn that over and have a look at the other side. Um, this amount of dust is fairly normal. However, again, we can see we can see around here again some more staining where the liquid has come underneath the logic board as well. So um, I don't think we need to completely strip this apart. It just needs to clean on this side. Uh, if I saw significant staining and corrosion on this side of the board, I would take off the heatsink and the speaker and stuff. However, that's the only kind of signs I'm seeing, so I don't think that's necessary. So what I'll do, I'll get a toothbrush and a paintbrush, and we'll start cleaning all this up. Right, so first pass. First pass is with the paintbrush, just to brush off all the surface dust. Thank you. 
looking better already. So now we'll have a, a look and attack at this staining and corrosion that's appeared. Now this is what is doing the damage. I mean, for example, these fellas here, these will be transistors or something along those lines. Um, uh, well, not transistors, they're probably capacitors actually. Um, and um, those are going to be handling the power flow and the power supply to the main uh, logic board and all the power systems. Um, and you can see we've got some corrosion around these. So straight away, these are all gonna be leaking current in all directions. Uh, and again, we've got some right around that controller there, whatever that is, I think that's, uh, I think I can see a Texas Instruments symbol on that or something, I don't know what it is. At any rate, this is all stuff that's gonna be upsetting the logic board and stopping the laptop from starting up. So, we're gonna get a toothbrush and I'm gonna use glass cleaner. If you've got um, isopropyl alcohol or something like that, then feel free to use that. I just use glass cleaner because it's a degreaser and it evaporates. So as a rudimentary cleaning fluid, it will do the job. So I've squirted some onto the toothbrush. I'm literally just going to attack straight on. I'm not going to apply, you don't want to apply too much pressure because uh, these PCBs are pretty tough, but they will break if you abuse them too much. So just uh, go over it m multiple times. Just brush steadily, but not forcefully and all of that crud will just clear up. So I'm just gonna start looking across. We've got small patches everywhere on this, so I'm just gonna keep attacking it wherever I can see some. And I'll take out this, uh, these memory modules check those. Those are looking pretty good to be honest. Nothing on the pins there, nothing on the chips. There we go, so that's looking a lot cl cleaner now. Uh, we'll just go into the ports along the sides as well since there's usually a little bit of leakage in there. And while these usually won't stop the uh, laptop from starting, but um, again, it's you just don't, you don't want current leaking everywhere, it just causes issues. Might be the difference between a USB port working or not working. There we go, so as you can see, that's now looking an awful lot cleaner than it was. So that has now got half a chance of starting up and running an operating system. I'm just gonna give that one last look over to make sure I haven't missed anything. Good, okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. This is the best chance it's gonna have at uh, surviving. So we'll reassemble that and we'll see what happens. Okay, now those screws are in, we're going to start connecting all these up and we're just going to check these connectors for corrosion before we plug them back in. So all these pins should be nice and gold. You'll be able to spot corrosion a mile away, it'll be black or green or something obvious. So.
Also, don't worry if the mounts for your battery are broken into a million pieces, it's quite common. If there's not enough to screw anything into, then just don't worry, it's not like the battery's going to fall out once the back panel is on. Alright. Put in a couple of screws and see if we've got some life. Nice. Our battery says. I uh -uh. need to find a charger for this. Mm, we had a flash from the charger there, but there's no actual light. That's not a good sign. Oh, it's come back. I haven't pushed the power button yet. I just waited for a while. Still nothing from the battery charge indicator. Let's try turning it on and seeing what happens. All right, there's nothing from that at all at the moment. We'll give that a little bit longer. I'm just going to leave that to stand for a minute and see if it does anything. Okay, I've just come back. We now have a very dim green light on the charger. It's almost invisible. However, if you cover it with your hand, you can just see it. That's a really bad sign, I'm not going to lie. Last time I saw that, it didn't end well. Okay, let's try one more thing before I give up on this one. Uh, I'm just going to try disconnecting the battery just to see if that is interfering with anything. Alright, we've got a solid green light now. That came on a bit quicker than last time. That's a good sign. Ah, we have life. There we go. We're there, we've just got a knackered battery. So uh, if we replace that battery, then uh, this thing will be back in the land of the living. So it looks like the battery has been shorting out a little bit on this one as well. So, um, however, thankfully, batteries are not a big deal to replace on MacBooks. So, that's very happy. I thought this one was going to be a bust, and I thought I was going to be throwing out this video. Good, right. So, um, I think we're more or less done here for this video now. I don't have one of these batteries in stock, but I mean, you've seen me take it out now. It's just those two screws there, lift it out, drop a new one in, buy it from eBay, ignore all the warning stickers because that's all bollocks, and we are finished. So, thank you very much for watching, and uh, this one got very lucky. I really thought that was going to be a bust then. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.